Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. Recently around here we had some big floods and they yeah, it went through a lot of nearby towns in a bad way. We uh, we were pretty good here. However, my girls, my daughters had a cafe on the edge of the river and it went, well, two feet of water through the cafe. I did save one of their radios and there's a video on that, which I'll put the link up there. But now I'm going to try another save from things in flood water. This is a fast charger for one of my daughter's phones, for Melissa's phone. And as you can see, it's covered in silt. It's been underwater for at least three days, probably longer. Um, and yeah, it's just filthy dirty. And rather than, you know, it's been a week or two now, rather than leave it dry out and plug it in and see what happens, uh, because I won't do that, because the radio I repaired, I did that. I actually soaked it in fresh water, let it dry out for a few days, plugged the uh, power pack in, and it went bang. And the fuse box threw out a, a circuit breaker. And if you look at the board here, it certainly fried itself. So what happens is that they get moisture inside. I thought they might have been waterproof, but obviously not. They get moisture inside, and no matter how long you leave it, it's you're still going to have some moisture in there. Plus, the floodwaters and the... And the you know, the silt and the salts in the water, the mineral salts will start to corrode things. So it's not good to leave them and they're probably never going to work. So rather than plug this one in and have a similar fate with tripping out the circuit breaker and frying the uh, charger, because it was near new, I'm going to see if I can get it apart and we'll see if we can wash it out. Hopefully it'll work. So let's have a closer look. It's absolutely covered in, in silt. It's dried. It's actually quite hard. Uh, it will obviously clean up all right. Uh, I haven't unplugged it yet, so the lead should be fine. I think we should be able to just give the lead a wash, and I think that'll be okay. However, there's most likely moisture has got inside this little charger, and we need to uh, take it apart, flush the board clean, and make sure there's no corrosion set in. It has been a couple of weeks, uh, and then hopefully once we get it all dry, we'll put it back together, and, you know, fingers crossed it'll work. Now, to get into these things, there is a bit of a seam around here. I can see the seam there. I think this panel is actually glued in. I did a bit of research just through YouTube on how to repair a USB charger. I found a few guys that had a go at it. And um, interestingly, one of them just had a screwdriver in there and popped the end out, saying that's how you get them apart. But on the video, it showed that it was all scratched and, and he'd obviously leave it around the sides for quite a while to break clips or whatever uh, before he could get it out. He didn't show that, of course. Another guy actually soaked some IPA, some isopropyl alcohol, and apparently it dissolves the glue. Uh, but then again, he just put a cotton bud around it, and within about a minute, he just flicked the top up. Again, there were lever marks all around it. So I don't think these guys are telling the full story. I'm going to give this a quick wash up just to get rid of all the silt, and then I'm going to leave it overnight with this end down, sitting in some IPA to give it every chance of dissolving glue. If indeed there is glue in there, uh, they may be just clips, in which case we might have to try and butcher it a little bit to get it apart. Shouldn't matter, because we can, as long as we don't break the plastic badly, we can fix it up with some silicon, and hopefully it will still work and charge up Melissa's phone. So first thing I'm going to do is just wash it in some fresh water, um, Nothing flash. I don't need to show this. I'm just going to put it in the water, give it a, a wash up, and then we'll set some IPA up and leave it soak overnight. Okay, there's the charger all cleaned up. Looks brand new. Uh, and Melissa did tell me that she had, hadn't bought it that long ago. It is a genuine Apple 20-watt uh, USB-C charger. So they're not cheap to buy. Let's see if we can save it. Um, I haven't tried to pry this top or anything. I did have another look at a YouTube video of a guy doing a teardown on one of these, and uh, lo and behold, he got the top off by using a Dremel and actually a little cutting wheel and cut the whole top right off. So that's not what I want to do. I don't know if the IPA will work, but we'll give it a go. So I'll just pour a bit in the lid here. Just a plastic lid. And it will evaporate, of course, but what I'm going to do is just sit that in there. It's not going to do any harm to the plastic, I hope. And uh, it won't hurt the electronics inside because it will evaporate fairly quickly once I get it open. 
but I'm going to leave that sit there overnight and just see if it helps. As I said, it may or may not be even glued. There might be plastic clips. It might be a glue that's not soluble in IPA. I don't know. But we'll give this a try first and we'll see what happens. Okay, guys, it's been a couple of days and I've had a plastic jar over here just to stop the IPA evaporating. Uh, and it's still there. We've still got some there. Uh, now, I've been doing more reading and I don't expect this to actually work. Uh, I don't know that it's going to dissolve any glue. So I reckon we're probably going to have to butcher this a little bit to get it apart. But uh, what I will do is next time I get one of these in the e-waste or one that's got an issue, I will take a sample. I'll cut the, the top off and I'll try it in a lot of different solvents and see if I can identify, assuming it's a glue, see if I can identify what will actually dissolve the glue and then I'll know for the future and I'll share it with you guys. Anyway. I'm assuming, of course, that it's not going to work now. I may be mistaken. But, um, yeah, I did a lot more reading through Google and I couldn't find any indication of what type of glue or whether anyone's had any success. And it's certainly tight. So I think I'm going to have to... I'm probably going to have to put it in a vise with a bit of a rag and hold it and just do a bit of prying and see if I can dig my way in. As I said earlier, with this one... As long as I don't make too much of a mess, we should be able to fix it up, uh, assuming we're going to get it to work. So it's jammed fairly securely in this vise, uh, and we'll start digging away. Hopefully I don't stab myself. That's very tight. There's no way known the guys could just flick this out, and I don't want to put too much pressure there. I'm going to damage the socket. Yeah, I... I won't know if it's glued or clipped until I get it apart. I'm assuming it's glued. Now you can see we're probably going to butcher this a fair bit, but uh, I don't think we have a choice. Okay, we'll try this one. The trouble is it's there's no gap to work in. I'll get, use a hammer and just give the screwdriver a bit of encouragement. The trouble is the vice isn't going to hold it now. But at least we can get a little bit of a gap in there. Oh, that's better. Yeah, I'm just going to work around like that a little bit with the hammer. So I've sped this footage up by three times, but I wanted to leave it all in so that you guys could see that it is rather involved to try and pry the end cap off this charger. It's certainly not a quick, easy job. But uh, I thought I'd leave all the footage in so that you can see just the, the trouble I went to to get it open. Aha, uh -huh. now I've broken through a bit this side. So I reckon we're going to get it out, but it is making a bit of a mess. Okay, we're working our way around now. It's certainly well attached. It was never going to fall out. There we go. Hopefully I haven't... I don't think I've damaged any of the components. I hope not. There's a little bit of a dint on the capacitor there. I might have done that. Um, so, what do we reckon? Oh, we get a focus on that? I don't know that it has been glued. It looks like it's been melted in. That's interesting. So if there's no glue, we're not going to dissolve it. I reckon it's like a, a compression fit under heat and they've actually fused it together with heat. Very difficult. Anyway, we did get in. Hopefully we didn't damage anything and we can certainly clean this up. Uh, as for the rest of it, you can see I've really pried the edges a lot there. Um, we can certainly file them back and use some silicon. Um, unfortunately, it looks like I've put a little bit of a dint in that capacitor. That's not ideal. I must have pushed in a bit far with the screwdriver. Everything else looks okay. So we'll see if we can get that board out. 
and I don't know if there's any moisture in there. It's quite possible. Oh no, I don't think this would have been sealed around the plug, around the socket. It certainly was pretty well sealed around the outer case. But there's possibly, no, we've bent a pin too. All right, we're making a bit of a mess of this job. But I think that'll straighten up. Yep, I think that might be fine. All right, we'll see if we can get this board out. So I just went and got some pliers and we'll see if we can slide the board out. I'll try and keep you in focus here. And we don't want to grab anything that's going to cause any damage. It seems to be loose or, you know, moving. There we go. Okay, so the, the module comes out completely. Uh, there's some contacts at the far end. There must be spring-loaded contacts. Oh yeah, there's the two contact points there. And I'm just having a look at this. There is some moisture. Now I can see that reflection there. There's certainly some moisture in there. Yep, on that board. Look at that. So if we had have plugged this in and tried it, even after sitting for two weeks, it certainly wouldn't have survived. There's moisture in there. I'm going to give this a rinse in probably just IPA. I'll give it a really good wash in isopropyl alcohol um, and give it a good chance to dry out. I have to get a razor blade and clean the edge of this up. I'm sure it's actually not glued or maybe it's like chemically glued sometime, somehow, a bit like they use that blue colored glue on PVC. It's some sort of chemical bond. It's not normal glue and there's no way known that we were going to dissolve that so it's looking like the only way to get into these is with brute force and we do need to clean them up afterwards but that's not going to matter because if we can save the thing and it will work it's much better doing this and having a little bit of a rough looking bit on your charger at least you can use it rather than plugging it in as it was and and frying it completely okay we've still got the ipa in this red lid so let's give it a really good wash up it will hopefully remove any mineral salts from the floodwaters and the IPA will help uh, evaporate any remaining water, moisture. And hopefully there's no damage done. I think the only issue now really is whether, whether my stabbing of this capacitor is going to cause a problem. It hasn't broken the case, so let's just put a bit of a dint in there. All right, we'll just sit that in there for the moment, give it a good soak. We'll also want to make sure there's no moisture left in here. So I'll give this a good rinse out and we'll get some compressed air in here to dry it all out. And I'll leave it overnight. It's a pretty warm night here now, so we'll leave it overnight and we'll assemble it tomorrow and give it a test. Just a bit of a clean out now with some compressed air. All right, I've just spent the last five minutes or so cleaning up around the inside of the case with a knife, just with a Stanley knife. And I can assure you that it's it's either not a glue at all, it's just a like the vulcanized plastic has fused together, or it's a special glue that's kind of the same color as the plastic. But as I was peeling it off, it was rock hard. The IPA certainly had no impact on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that somehow they've melted the plastics together uh, and it's certainly not designed to be serviceable and it's certainly not designed to be removed easily or if at all uh, as you can see we had to do a fair bit of butchering uh, there's no clips it uh, looks like it just has fine ribs here and it was just a press in and somehow vulcanized to seal it anyway we've got it apart i've cleaned it up i'm just going to file these bulgy bits here I'll file them back down just to get it as neat as I can and we'll fill the gaps later with some silicon as we put it back together. Okay, it's the next day. Everything should be nicely dried out. It all looks pretty good. Um, so really, we've just got to push it back in there, make sure the terminals um, plug back in. That's the way it goes. And I um, have to push it home. There we go, it felt like it just pushed in. Uh, and we'll just make sure this fits, that can go either way. 
looks to be the same both directions or they will probably line up the notches from our gouging I think that looks pretty good and make sure that's going to push home nicely no oh, it's actually not I might put it the other way around that's better that pushes in there flat so there's a little bit of a gap to fill here as you can see uh, I'm just going to use some clear silicon you could use any sort of glue it really isn't doesn't have to be waterproof because the water gets in through the socket anyway which we found uh, the good thing with silicon is it will actually fill up all the cavities there and, and leave a nice smooth finish so that's the way it goes uh, so I'll take that out I'll put a bit of silicon around and I think we'll get a little bit of a clamp just to hold it tight then it'll all we'll just have to leave it for another day for that to set but just before we glue it back together I'm going to see if it works I can't wait another day I'm confident that it's nice and dry now so it shouldn't short out and hopefully we didn't damage anything uh, I've straightened the pins so let's plug it into a power board here plugs in nicely uh, the cord that I washed up looked perfect and it's it's had a, an afternoon in the sun so it should be totally dry so we can plug that in which plugs in fine uh, now I've got, I don't have an Apple device here, but I've got my earbuds, which are uh, Jabra ones, I think. Um, and these USB-C uh, plugs are, are supposed to charge anything, even though it will charge like an Android phone much slower. It's designed for an Apple phone, but I believe the regulations are that if you have that plug, it shouldn't damage anything and it should charge, even though it might be slower. So we'll plug that into here. And I think there's a little charging light there. I'll turn the power on. Hopefully we don't get any sparks. Hopefully it doesn't blow our circuit breaker. There we go. Aha. Beautiful. We have an orange light. I think that means it's charging. It's flashing. So there we go. Our charger's working. So all I've got to do is glue the top in with the silicon. I'll give it back to Melissa and she can try it on her phone. But it looks like this experiment has been a success. And even though it took a while, we've saved the charger. And there we have it, uh, glued up with some silicon. I've used a bit of terps just to wipe away any excess. And I've just got a bit of pressure on the clamp here. Not enormous amounts, but just enough to hold that end panel flat. And we'll leave that till tomorrow. And then we can say the job's finished. Charge us all back together. I just went and pinched Christine's phone. And we'll plug it in. Now Christine's is a Samsung. I think it's a Samsung. It's not an Apple anyway. Um, so let's plug this in. And look at that, magnificent. And it actually says fast charging, so it's going to work fine on that. Excellent. So, job's done. We can give um, yeah, fast charging 32 minutes till full. We can give the charger back to Melissa. She should be happy. It's worked out really good. And the repair is quite strong and solid. It's a little bit grubby around there, and it obviously looks a bit messy. I think I must have had dirty fingers when I was smearing the silicon around. But anyway, it's all fixed. Melissa should be happy. We've saved it from landfill. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned that not everything that goes under floodwaters is going to be landfill. These can certainly be fixed easily, but the thing is you need to get into them to dry them out. As I've learned from experience, the first one fried itself. As we saw with this one, there was moisture in it, so it would have done the same. But if we can get into them and clean them out, dry them out, they will work perfectly fine. Moisture will not hurt the electronics. The cord was no worries at all. I just rinsed it in fresh water, left it in the sun one afternoon, and it's dried out perfectly. So job's fixed. Success. Melissa will be happy. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.